Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Inflation may be one of the most familiar words in business news and economic reports. It has plunged countries into long periods of instability. Central bankers often aspire to be known as inflation hawks. Politicians have won elections with promises to combat inflation. Inflation was even declared public enemy number one in the United States by President Gerald Ford in 1974. So, what is inflation? What causes it? How is inflation measured? What are the positive and negative effects of inflation, and what investments could beat inflation? In this video, I will discuss these questions with you. Section 1. What is inflation? Inflation is a rise in prices, which can be translated as the decline of purchasing power over time. The rate at which purchasing power drops can be reflected in the average price increase of a basket of selected goods and services over some time. The rise in prices, which is often expressed as a percentage, means that a unit of currency effectively buys less than it did in prior periods. Inflation can be contrasted with deflation, which occurs when prices decline and purchasing power increases. Section 2. What causes inflation? The gradually rising prices associated with inflation can be caused in two main ways, demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. Both come back to the fundamental economic principles of supply and demand. First, demand pull inflation. Demand pull inflation is when demand for goods or services increases, but supply remains the same, pulling up prices. Demand pull inflation can be caused in a few ways. In a healthy economy, people and companies increasingly make more money. This growing purchasing power allows consumers to buy more than they could before, increasing competition for existing goods and raising prices while companies attempt to ramp up production. On a smaller scale, demand pull inflation can be caused by the sudden popularity of certain products. For example, at the start of the coronavirus pandemic, the increase in demand for indoor, socially distant activities combined with the highly anticipated release of Animal Crossing, New Horizons, saw the price of the Nintendo Switch gaming system almost double on some secondary markets. Because Nintendo could not increase production due to factory production halts from COVID-19, Nintendo could not raise its supply to meet rising consumer demand, resulting in increasingly higher prices. Second, cost push inflation. Cost push inflation is when the supply of goods or services is limited in some way but demand remains the same, pushing up prices. Usually, some sort of external event, like a natural disaster, hinders companies' abilities to produce enough of certain goods to keep up with consumer demand. This allows them to raise prices, resulting in inflation. For example, think about oil prices. You need a certain amount of gas to fuel your car. When international treaties or disasters drastically reduce the oil supply, gas prices rise because demand remains relatively stable even as supply shrinks. Section 3. How is inflation measured? The basic formula to calculate the inflation rate is as follows. For example, at the beginning of the year, the price of a basket of groceries costs you $40. At the end of that same year, to buy the exactly same basket of groceries, you need to pay $45. So according to the formula, the inflation rate for the year should be 45 minus 40, then divided by 40 and times 100. So it ends with 12.5%. The US inflation rate is typically measured by the CPI and PCE indexes. These two indexes are similar but different in several subtle ways. First, Consumer Price Index, or CPI. CPI is a measure of the average change over time in the prices paid by urban consumers for a market basket of consumer goods and services. It tracks changes in the costs of eight major categories people spend money on. Those eight categories are food and beverages, housing, apparel, transportation, education, and communication, medical care, recreation, and other goods and services. In the news, you may hear about different versions of the CPI, including headline CPI and core CPI. Headline CPI includes the entire consumer basket of goods and services, while core CPI excludes food and energy. Food and energy prices are volatile because they are traded on the commodities market. Therefore, headline CPI normally exhibits more volatility than core CPI due to the inclusion of food and energy. Second, Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, or PCE. 
The price index for personal consumption expenditures is another measure of inflation, this one produced by the Bureau of Economic Analysis, or BEA, using data on prices from Bureau of Labor Statistics, or BLS. The PCE price index measures the change in prices for all consumption items, not just those paid for out of pocket by consumers. For example, the weight on health care in the PCE reflects what consumers pay out of pocket for premiums, deductibles, and copayments as well as the costs covered by employer-provided insurance, Medicare, and Medicaid. In the CPI, only the direct costs to consumers are reflected. This difference in scope means that the PCE deflator and the CPI have very different weights. For example, the weight on health care is 22% in the PCE index, but just 9% in the CPI. The weight on housing is 42% in the CPI, but just 23% in the PCE index. That means that a given increase in healthcare prices will affect the PCE index much more than it will affect the CPI. The Fed uses the PCE price index as its main measure of inflation. Its long-run target for inflation is for the PCE price index to increase at an annual rate of 2% over time. The PCE is also a chained index, while the CPI is not. This means that the PCE is better at accounting for substitutions between similar items when one of them becomes more expensive. Because its formula uses updated data, the PCE is believed to be a more accurate reflection of price changes over time and across items. Section 4. Effects of inflation. Inflation can be construed as either a good or a bad thing, depending upon which side one takes and how rapidly the change occurs. Let's start with the negative side. Number 1. Money loses its value. As the prices of products go up, money loses value. If we look at the value of the US dollar between 1980 and 2019, we can see that the dollar has lost over half its value. In other words, you can buy half as many goods and services with $1 as you could 30 years ago. So if you stored $1,000 under your bed in 1980, it would be worth less than $500 today. Number 2. Inequality. Inflation can predominantly hurt low-income households. Price increases usually take up more of their income and further reduce their savings. Therefore, they have less chance to invest in assets such as housing and stocks to outstrip inflation. In contrast, the rich could still use their extra income to own more assets, which leads to a higher level of inequality. Number 3. Exchange Rate Fluctuations. When the money supply and prices increase, a country's currency can decline in value. For example, a Chinese toy is worth 50 yuan in China and $5 in the US. On this exchange, the exchange rate between US dollar and the Chinese yuan should be 1 to 10. However, the Chinese printed more money and inflation increases the price of the toy to 100 yuan and the price of the toy in the US has not gone up. As a result, the exchange rate between the United States dollars and the Chinese yuan becomes 1 to 20. Chinese currency depreciates half of its value due to inflation. Number 4. Increased cost of living. As prices of goods increase, consumers will have to pay more to buy necessities and luxuries alike. This may not necessarily be a problem if incomes rise in line with inflation, but those who don't will face higher real prices. In other words, they will have to spend a higher percentage of their income on the same number of goods. Besides negative effects, surprisingly, sometimes inflation could have some positive effects under certain scenarios and for certain groups of people. Number 1. Increase spending and investment. As inflation increases, consumers are incentivized to move purchasing decisions forward, rather than wait until next year, when the product will be more expensive, consumers rationally elect to buy now than pay more next year. In addition, as money starts losing its value under inflation, it is necessary to find ways to maintain the same purchasing power. Therefore, people tend to invest more in the stock market or real estate, rather than leave cash in hand or low-interest bank accounts. Number 2. Reduce effective level of debt. Whether it's a business, the government, or the consumer, those who have high levels of debt may benefit from having higher levels of inflation. For example, the borrower may have an interest rate of 4% on their debt. If inflation is at 10% and their income increases at a similar rate, it means the effective rate by which they are repaying declines. Section 5. What investments beat inflation? You can beat inflation and boost your purchasing power by investing in the following assets if you handle them properly. First. Stocks. Investing in the stock market is one way to potentially beat inflation. 
Investing in individual stocks offers no guarantees, but a well-diversified investment in a broad market index fund can grow wealth over decades and beat inflation. For example, even adjusting for inflation, investments in an S&P 500 index fund have averaged over 6% returns from June 1930 to June 2020. However, please keep in mind that this is a long-term average. In some years, the S&P 500 had lower or even negative returns. Second, bonds. Bonds on average offer lower returns than stocks, but they can also regularly beat inflation. Risk-averse investors or those approaching or in retirement may seek out the more consistent returns of investments in bonds and bond funds to beat inflation. Third, Treasury Inflation Protected Security. Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, or TIPS, are a special class of U.S. Treasury bonds specifically designed to protect investors from inflation. TIPS automatically adjusts the value of your investment based on changes to CPI, meaning the value of your bond rises with inflation. Fourth, Real estates. Historically, real estate prices increase more rapidly than inflation. For example, long-term house prices have historically outstripped inflation. An average house sold in the U.S. was $74,500 in 1980, which, adjusted for inflation is worth $231,000 in 2019 prices. By comparison, the average house sells for $375,000 in 2019 a massive $144,000 in real gains over 39 years. All right, that's all for today's topic. So, what do you think about inflation? Do you have any related experience or story willing to share? Please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.